بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله All praise is due to Allah and may the peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon our last prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh My name is brother James Yusuf Yee and I'm a former U.S. Army officer and American citizen In the United States Islam is the fastest growing religion and you find that along with the many new faces of Islam the many new faces of Muslim converts you also find along with that the many stories of how these people came to Islam I myself converted to Islam in 1991 when I formally took the Shahada testifying that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad peace be upon him is the last messenger and prophet of Allah yes I'm a Muslim convert today it's quite trendy to refer to people who convert to Islam as reverts based on the idea that well maybe all people are born with this natural inclination called fitra to believe in one God but it's my personal preference to refer to myself as a Muslim convert um, accepting Islam and also accepting the prophethood of Muhammad peace be upon him I became Muslim in 1991 April but my story really begins much much earlier than that growing up in a small town small suburban city of Springfield New Jersey it was my parents who raised me as Christian. Well, it was really my mother who played the major role in giving me religion as a youngster. My father played a, a less active role in, in that respect. But I was raised as a Lutheran, which is one of the more liturgical Protestant denominations in the Christian faith. It involved me going to Sunday school classes, weekly as a youngster joining the church youth group uh, in my early teens taking confirmation classes with the church pastor on a weekly basis I went through this process in in Christianity called the confirmation which you actually just do that you confirm your faith as a Christian according to Christian doctrine and concepts I was confirmed in the eighth grade but once confirmed my my mother became less adamant about ensuring that I go to church on a weekly basis and now felt that I was old enough after having been confirmed and having understood the basic concepts of Christianity that I was old enough to make my own decisions about going to church I'm now into my high school year and during that time I guess I would say I preferred more sports activities like soccer, wrestling, basketball, football, over going to church on Sundays. And so I became more active socially during my high school years and being very active in, in sports, going to church less often not like I did as a youngster on a really on a weekly basis as I graduated from high school I would enter the United States Military Academy West Point and at West Point I think I was at a time in my life when I was searching for spirituality yes I was Christian I wasn't a regular churchgoer uh, like I was as a youngster but I was looking for some spirituality but throughout my years at West Point at the Military Academy I did maintain my Christian faith however looking back on that experience I feel that I never felt that I found what I was looking for in, in spirituality 
in the Protestant Cadet Chapel when I was there. I would graduate from West Point in 1990. I was commissioned as a second lieutenant into the United States Army. After graduation, I went on a trip, a vacation, to the beaches of South Carolina and celebrating my recent accomplishment in graduating from the prestigious academy known as West Point. And on my way home from that trip, I would stop in Washington, D.C. and meet up with a friend who was at one time a former classmate of mine at West Point. I would also meet my friend's roommate, someone who was a college student at Howard University. Howard University also in Washington, D.C. And this person was at a point in her life when she was deeply studying the religion of Islam. And she was the first person who actually gave me a taste of what Islam is. And when I first heard something about Islam, I actually rejected it outright. I was Christian. And when I heard about this religion called Islam, I myself classified or characterized it as, quote, misguidance. But this young lady challenged me at that point and asked me, well, what do you know about Islam? And my response was, nothing really. And her question then was, well, how could you judge something if you don't know anything about it? And I thought for a moment, that makes sense. I didn't know anything about Islam. Back at West Point, I never had a course on comparative religions. I never had a class or formal course on the religion of Islam. I didn't know anything about Islam. And it made sense that you can't judge something if you don't know anything about it. So then I would take it upon myself and take the next step and learn something about Islam. Maybe my intention was to gain an understanding of this faith so that I could come back and say, yes, this is why I'm rejecting it. I went to the local bookstore, I got a book, a basic book about Islam, and this book was actually entitled Understanding Islam. An Introduction to the Muslim World. It was written by Thomas Lippmann. It was just a book, a general book about Islam that I found in the bookstore. I purchased it and began to read. Began to learn about Islam. Again, I just wanted to really further my knowledge. Later I would get another book. That one was entitled Islam in Focus. And that would further explain more of the concepts of Islam. It wasn't long before I quickly became intrigued, seeing that there were many similarities between my faith at that time, which was Christianity, and Islam. I think the greatest similarity that jumped out at me was learning that Muslims also believe in Jesus, Jesus Christ. And I learned that Muslims also believe that Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary. Well, as a Christian, this was something that I was brought up on. It's really the core aspect of Christianity, to believe that Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary. Because that's how, in Christianity, one really attains uh, salvation. Believing that Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary, then later dying on a cross so that your sins can be forgiven. This is what I believed in as a Christian. It was the first time I learned that there was another faith that also believed that Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary. I was quite intrigued, but that was something that really jumped out at me. As I read further about Islam and learned more, I recognized some very, very familiar names. Names like Abraham, Moses, David, Noah, Lot, Solomon, Joseph. I was familiar with these names. Again, from being raised as a Christian, going to Sunday school week by week when I was a youngster. I was intrigued to learn that these stories were also part of Muslim tradition. I was surprised and didn't know that there was another faith that also held some of the many same beliefs that I held as a Christian. As I read further about Islam, I would then start to learn about 
Prophet Muhammad. We'll take a break here and continue with my journey to Islam, my first steps towards accepting the faith, and hear more about what I learned about the Prophet in becoming a Muslim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome back. I'm James Yusuf Yi, an American Muslim convert. And we've been discussing my journey to Islam. I've been narrating my story about how I became Muslim. In the first session before the break, I talked about my upbringing as a Christian and how I was challenged to learn about Islam. And we got to the point where I started to read about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. When I started to learn about the Prophet Muhammad, I didn't know anything about him. But it was quite interesting to see that he had a message that was exactly similar to those who were before him. And when I say those who were before him, I mean those biblical prophets who I knew about from Sunday school classes as a youngster. People like Abraham and Moses and David and Joseph, prophets who taught their people that God is one. Well, I learned about the Prophet Muhammad and how he essentially had the same exact mission to teach people indeed that God is one and to teach them how to worship God the Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was quite intriguing also that this mission of teaching people about the oneness of Allah was also the same as what Jesus had done. Indeed, I was a believer of Jesus, that he was a great teacher, that he reminded us about who our Creator was, about who God was. As a Christian, I though was someone who actually believed that Jesus was part of God or the Son of God. And when I prayed, I prayed to Jesus even though I believed I was praying to God. Praying to God, praying to Jesus, to me, in my mind at that time, was, was one and the same. But after learning about the prophets and seeing the vast similarities in Islam and Christianity, I started to look closer at this idea of three in one, the doctrine of the Trinity, which I had learned about through my confirmation classes as a Christian, the idea that God is actually three entities, the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. I started to look closer at this concept. I had never really before took a critical look at what this meant. As I mentioned, I, throughout my life this time, had prayed to Jesus. And if, for example, I wanted forgiveness, would pray to Jesus for my forgiveness, believing that he would forgive my sins. But I also was taught as a Christian that there was the third part of this trinity called the Holy Spirit that lived inside me. And I started to question that because if the Holy Spirit lived inside of me and was now in me, then I thought maybe that would make me divine or part of God and that didn't make sense at all. So I started to feel a little bit uncomfortable with this idea. I guess I was turning back to that natural state, that that state of fitra where every person has this innate feeling of believing in one God. I was now taking a more critical look at what I had learned as a Christian. But what was very interesting in learning about Islam was though some of those aspects are still there in Islam, except it's not a triune God as it's defined in Christianity. It's one God, and we believe in Jesus as Muslims that he was born of the Virgin Mary, but that he was a prophet, and he had a message, and that was to teach people about the oneness of God, to teach people how to worship God. But that aspect of the Holy Spirit kind of is there as well. And I see it as not part of God living inside me, but something that God created, that he put inside me to make me want to believe in him, to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I believe that's the fitra. That's that natural inclination in every human being to want to know who his or her creator is, to want to know who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. I believe I have that fitra inside me. But that's something that Allah created for every human being. Perhaps that is similar to that 
aspect of Holy Spirit in the Christian faith. So I felt comfortable with understanding that I'm naturally inclined to believe in one God. It started to make more sense to me that I accept a true monotheistic faith to believe just in God. But at the same time, my teachings from my background in Christianity were still there. Maintaining my beliefs in Jesus, maintaining my beliefs in the prophets, the biblical stories, the aspect of forgiveness. It really was just starting to make more sense to me that my sins would be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God the Almighty, because He's merciful. Not because Jesus died on a cross and my sins would then be forgiven as a sacrifice. It made sense to me that God forgives because He's merciful. As I started to read the Quran, I would see that the chapters started with the words Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Translation, in the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful. I saw that chapter after chapter, they started with these words. That God is the most gracious, that God is the most merciful, and that's why He forgives our sins. This was really making sense to me. I became Muslim by going to a local New Jersey mosque in the city of Newark. And I took the Shahada formally, testifying, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. That there is no God but Allah. And that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the messenger of Allah. I made this testimony at this mosque administered by the resident Imam from Ghana named Sheikh Abbas. I was now Muslim after taking the Shahada. I had learned about the five pillars of Islam in my reading, knowing that Muslims pray five times a day, that they fast the month of Ramadan, that they give a portion of their wealth in charity, and that hopefully at least once in their lifetime they'll go and make the pilgrimage to Mecca. But when I became a Muslim, for me, I thought I'd practice Islam much like I was practicing Christianity at that time. I wasn't a very religious Christian, but I believed in the doctrine. When I became a Muslim, my intention was to be a basic Muslim, to believe that there's one God and simply to believe that the Prophet Muhammad was his messenger. I took Shahada in a small mosque in Newark, New Jersey while I was on leave in the military, on a short two-week break, before being shipped off to my first assignment as a lieutenant. That first assignment was in Germany, and knowing that I was on my way to Germany, and being a new Muslim, I was thinking, there may not be many Muslims in Germany. What I knew about Germany is that it was a Western Christian country. So before I went to Germany, before I shipped out, leaving New Jersey, I would get myself a copy of the Quran. I got myself the Yusuf Ali, Arabic-English translation, a hardback, similar to the one that we have right here. It almost looked identical to this copy. But that was the first Quran that I had. And knowing that I might not have any resources to read further about Islam on my first overseas assignment as a, an army officer, I also got myself uh, another set of books. It was an English translation of Sahih Muslim, a collection of prophetic traditions known as Hadith in Islam. Things that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, some of the things that he did, as well as those things that he approved of. These are all collected in various forms of books known as hadith. The one set of volume that I got was known as Sahih Muslim. So I had with me on my way to Germany a copy of the Quran and the four volume set translation of prophetic traditions. These would be a great inspiration and a learning source, a great learning source for me in my very early days as a new Muslim. I recall reading through Sahih Muslim, reading the traditions, reading all the stories, giving me a, a much broader basis of understanding on 
what Muslim life is like. It gave me a sound general knowledge of Islam. But I, I myself considered myself really just to be a, a basic Muslim, believing in Allah, understanding the prophethood of Muhammad, and understanding pillars of Islam, praying five times a day, fasting Ramadan, giving charity, and having an intention to make the pilgrimage, go on Hajj and visit Mecca at least once in my lifetime. I understood those. But as a basic Muslim, I was someone who was not very much interested in religious worship. I intended to be Muslim because I believed in one God and believed in the prophethood of Muhammad. But I wasn't someone who I thought would be an advocate of praying all the time or even completing all of my five prayers. I was a very young Muslim. I had just converted. And I was on my way a few days later to Germany. My conversion to Islam, I would say, was rather uneventful. But it was a reconfirmation of my monotheistic faith in one God. But that event, becoming Muslim still, would later change my whole outlook on my life. A story which I will go much more in depth in coming episodes. I stop here and look forward to narrating more about my journey to Islam and the inspiration I received after becoming Muslim. My name is James Yusuf Yee, your brother in Islam, an American Muslim convert, and I'm talking to you about my journey to Islam. Looking up at the sky, searching for the most high, he rejected the way of worshipping gods of clay. Prophet Ibrahim knew that Allah was near, and that the heart of the Muslim is